Greetings to all. Today I'll tell you about the most venomous animals in the world. Golden Poison Frog It's exactly what our guest is called that will turn around your concept of what venomous creatures are capable of. To all appearances, this is a small frog. It will even seem cute to some people. But in fact, this is one of the most poisonous invertebrates on the Earth. The limbs of this 2 centimeter wonder lack webs, the tips of its fingers are extended into discs, and they play the role of suckers. With their help, it is much easier for a frog to get around the leaves or branches. The most prominent thing in the Golden Poison poison frog is, of course, its bright appearance. The animal shows in every way that you would better not mess with it. Otherwise, its neural paralytic venom batrachotoxin, will come into use. The deadly dose of its venom for humans is only 2 micrograms. Here you will probably think that in a frog there is hardly enough toxin to kill an adult. That is not the case. This tiny but terrible golden poison frog is ready to offer up to 1 milligram of venom. In other words, a specimen has enough toxins to kill 5 500 adult people, let alone different animals that swallow this frog by stupidity. Even voracious crocodiles are instantly sent to glory. After all, the most frightening thing is that it is not so easy to avoid contact with the golden poison frog. As well as with other poison frogs, they prefer to spend their days in the crowns of trees, not in cool water. It is not in vain that they lost their webs, as I said earlier. Now they can crawl on any surface, even with their heads down. However good they may be at creeping, at some point they will have to fall and their neighbors will be threatened again. Our guests are completely soaked with the toxin. In other words, they are ready to kill the enemy even without wanting to do this if they touch it entirely by accident. As long as their venom contacts the enemy's skin, the victim will have problems with the heart that will cause arrhythmia. A little bit later, they will suffer from the paralysis of lung muscles and limbs. Then the final and fatal stage will come that is named death. Of course, it is just a small dose of venom that will penetrate the skin, but this time Toxin is so deadly that even so, it will be enough to cause the lethal outcome. Scientists have not still found out what this frog has such a deadly weapon for, just as how and why it itself does not die from the toxic substance. After all, this venom is generated in its body, not without a reason, just because it feeds on beetles and spiders. In other words, it receives toxins from other creatures, it merges them into one, and it leaves it in its body until better days that can come suddenly. Pitoey. This is what a genus of sparrow-like birds is named that, as you have already guessed, is also extremely venomous. The most curious thing is that they have something in common with the golden poison frog. Yes, they contain the same venom that is called batrachotoxin. This time the venom is not simply contained in their body but right on the skin and on the feathers of birds. What's more, they get it in the same way, by eating beetles that are soaked with it. Batrachotoxin is not dangerous to birds as their immunity is adapted to it in the course of evolution. This beauty lives in New Guinea, and according to many sources, it is considered the first scientifically confirmed venomous bird in the world. Yes, I can imagine the faces of researchers that encounter it for the first time, though no, not their faces but fingers. After all, as they told us about that later, after the contact with these feathered creatures, the fingers of scientists started to numb and people were very worried. They couldn't even imagine that a simple feathered creature would exert such an effect on them. After a while, a group of specialists found a local tribe there and they decided to inquire about those birds. In response, they received a clear answer. Yes, they are venomous and it is known for a long time. However, it is not the same case as with the golden poison frog. The venom of Pitoey causes just a temporal tissue numbness and a burning sensation to humans, not a lethal outcome. Armed Spider What episode about poisonous creatures can do without spiders, right? In 2010, the Guinness Book of Records recognized our guest as the most venomous one among spiders, though it is restrictedly spread. In any case, its limited distribution does not mean that after a while, the limits of the spider cannot change and that it will get to new territories. Let's not be in a hurry. I will tell you about it a little later. For now, let us take a look at the body of an armed spider. It is so huge. The length of a female's body is about 2 inches. And and their arm span can reach 7.1 inches. Taken all in all, the spider easily succeeds in being almost completely disguised. The arthropod is dressed in a brown camouflage and it goes out from inconspicuous places only at night. At the same time, this daily routine doesn't disturb our guests from traveling at all. They say that this spider can leave its native Brazilian forests for any other continent. There, it would be nice to integrate the commercial of cheap tickets purchasing. However, our guest, alas, is a hitchhiker. 
Striker, it jumps into random boxes and it hides. Then it uses its sixth sense to define if a vehicle arrived at the final destination. It gets out and it runs away wherever the road takes it. Our guest doesn't feed on fruits. The basis of its menu is insects, amphibians, and reptiles. That's why it's not difficult to find them on any continent. One would probably get away with it if the spider traveled and it didn't touch anybody. After all, it annoys others, I'll say. This arthropod has many neurotoxins in its glands and even more additional substances, one third of which is not properly researched. Yes, some people would think that the armed spider makes use of its venom only in extreme cases for the sake of self-defense. However, that's not the case. In its understanding, the best defense is attacking, very aggressive, and it prefers to attack before its opponent manages to do harm to it. The power of its venom will be enough to send to glory even an adult and healthy man. Come on, I suggest that we fetch our wind and check out the shot from our subscriber who's shared it with me recently. The man sent me a photo of his new puppy that he personally took from the shelter. This is the first pet in his life. That's why he's still wondering what house he should choose for it, what to feed it with, and so on. So he's trivially no time for inventing a name for it. Let's help him, shall we? Write in the comments what you would call this beauty. If anything, it's a boy. We've had enough rest. It's time to look at a creature that's considered the most poisonous among snakes in the whole world. It's an inland taipan, and its venom is approximately 180 times more powerful than that of a cobra. A dose that you'll get from a snake, on average, will be enough to kill 100 people or 250,000 mice. You are surely thinking that it's not a snake, but a full-fledged tyrant, and simultaneously a terminator from Australia that kills everything that's moving. And what's not moving? It sets in motion and murders. That's not the case. After all, it's not so. After all, the inland taipan is even less aggressive than an ordinary taipan. All the registered cases of their bites were the result of careless treatment with it. Nothing else. These snakes inhabit dry flatlands and deserts. This is where they hide in the cracks and rifts of soil. In all likelihood, the inland taipan perfectly understands what power it's endowed with. That's why it's not in a hurry to apply it or assault its enemy. It's sure that as long as someone looks cross-eyed at it or tries to attack the former, the creature will have a deadly argument concerning its defense. After all, it's impossible to argue with such a view of life. The venom of Taipans truly contains a whole cocktail of chemical compounds that will immediately influence almost each system of the victim. This means that any offenders will be punished. There's no alternative. The powerful neurotoxins of our guest turn off its nerves, and they don't allow the enemy to contract its own muscles. It even comes to the respiratory arrest. Other substances increase the coagulation of blood. As a result, thrombi clot vessels, the so-called myotoxins, damage muscle functioning. That's why a poor victim doesn't manage to run away. All these compounds separately don't bode well. However, they become a full-fledged weapon of mass destruction against mammals. Why exactly against them? The thing is that though the venom has an influence on other animals, according to what experts say, the poison does exert an impact, but it's not so effective. That's why why the main prey of the inland Taipan is rodents. Gaboon Viper. This is what another deadly reptile is called. This time it's spread in the forests and open woods of West, Central, South, as well as East Africa. They say it's one of the biggest and thickest vipers that can grow up to six and a half feet in length. Here it is, you may think. Now the snake is aggressive. It's deadly. What's more, it grows up to six and a half feet. It's a born killer. However, Mother Nature doesn't think so. She endowed a Gaboon Viper with a calm character. The crawler rarely reacts to some outer irritations. That's why there are literally isolated cases of their attacks on humans. Be that as it may, you should keep in mind that its bite doesn't become less dangerous. Without immediate medical attention, the toxins of the Gaboon Viper cause a row of systematic lesions to the body that can lead to a deadly outcome. Don't worry, this paradox with the calmest behavior of a dangerous snake has a couple of explanations. For example, people usually have no notion that they've just gone by a kill a reptile. Its leaf-like camouflage excellently covers our guest in any colorful landscape. Secondly, these snakes don't simply bite people, they just don't want to do this. You may jump around, you may make unsatisfied faces at them, you may take them in your hands, and in the end, nothing of what was mentioned above will put them out of temper. The snake 
will get tense only when it feels that someone wants to kill it. It will immediately become angry, and it'll inject you with the lethal dose of its toxins. In everyday life, the Gaboon Viper prefers to feed on mice, frogs, pygmy antelopes, and other not the biggest animals. Rough-Skinned Newt This is rather small for someone, and at the same time, simultaneously, a nice amphibian. It grows from 5 to 8.5 inches in length, and it has a grain-like skin, and it inhabits the western coasts of the USA and Canada. Yes, you're not mistaken that this creature also doesn't rush to attract too much attention, though if we provide them with all this, the amphibian will definitely not be disillusioned. This creature looks inconspicuous. At the same time, it's a living carrier of a dead toxin, tetradotoxin. Its concentration in the body of our guests is more than enough to finish off several adult people, or 25,000 mice. The only creature that can tolerate this poisonous substance are ribbon snakes. They worked out the lack of sensitivity to the venom, and now they feed on rough-skinned newts. But that's another story. Let me tell you about a good piece of news. This creature does not rush to attack anyone, it's not aggressive, and it won't even provoke a conflict. The rough-skinned newt will calmly, and the main point honestly, worn of its venom by bending its back and curling up its tail. It'll do it in a way that its yellow belly will be clearly seen. This would not tell us anything about it. At the same time, animals perfectly get this hint. They realize that it's not worth swallowing this creature. Yes, exactly, to swallow. The toxin influences exclusively mucous membranes. Bloodworms. Have you asked to show you a poisonous sea worm? No, it came to our episode on its own, and I couldn't refuse him. The average size of an adult bloodworm is about 20 centimeters, though some of them grow considerably bigger. Apart from that, the body of the worm is covered with plenty of unusual outgrowths. Essentially, all of them are the analog of their feet. It's equally comfortable to dig out the mud with them and swim in water. In contrast to rainworms, bloodworms prefer the salty beaches of Florida, California, and Mexico. After all, sea beaches are not only a beautiful resting place, but also a full-fledged buffet dinner. Whatever you may look at, it's juicy crustaceans, tadpoles, or some young worms who will wait for you. As long as the blood worm comes across its prey, it uses its only, but at the same time very effective, weapon, the retractable throat. Technically, the worm throws a piece of its gastrointestinal tract at its enemy. It exerts an incredible psychological effect on it. However, the show doesn't end on this, the sharp teeth of our guest are always ready to bite through any flesh, even human skin. They say that a blood worm has only four teeth, but it's not worth taking pity on it. It's more than enough for the creature. After all, the surface of its teeth is reliably smeared with a mixture of firm proteins and atasomite, a mineral that's based on copper. This is where holes are located. Though they reduce the sturdiness of teeth, they help inject them with a cocktail that consists of 20 different toxins. Surprisingly, by the way, bloodworms can replenish the poison in the process of injecting. The walls of its teeth serve as a catalyzer of necessary chemical processes. Here's the answer to this question that at the same time has gotten ourselves interested for the last minutes. They don't pose any threat to us. This worm cannot work out so many toxins purely physically in order to be able to do any harm to them. Atlantic Stargazer You should agree that you won't ever guess by the name that this creature is venomous. After all, it seems to be an utterly inoffensive and even nice underwater dweller that swims somewhere at the bottom and that feeds on sea stars. Actually, we can see a fish with a spindle-shaped body that grows up to 16 inches in length. It was named after its eyes that are located upstairs and that are maximally close to each other. You get the impression that they were kind of directed at the sky. As far as the toxins of this beauty are concerned, all of them are hidden in its venomous thorns. They're characterized by painful prickles, they take a lot of time for healing, and they're not deadly. However, the venom of this fish has not been properly studied, and this cannot but frighten. What if they had a definite secret that we don't know about? In the shoes of divers, I would fear this fish like the plague, though it's very difficult to do this. After all, it attacks from ambush. A monstrous hornet, killing bees, and the main plague carriers. Later on, I'll tell you about the most dangerous insects in the world. 
Hard ticks. This is the name of the family of the most dangerous insects, which includes more than 650 species. Among them, there are both relatively harmless creatures and incredibly dangerous, ready to suck blood and carry terrible diseases. Unfortunately for us, you can meet these monsters almost everywhere, even in Antarctica and the Arctic. As I said, scientists have counted more than 650 species of these creatures, each of which is adapted to life in its own particular conditions. Some are accustomed to living in the cold, others to the highest temperatures, and others have settled in the forests. And it would be a different matter if all of them were easy to spot, but this is not the case. Small size allows these parasites to remain unnoticed until the very last moment. As soon as they hit an exposed patch of skin, they immediately cling to it as their last chance to stay alive. Hard ticks are so engrossed in the process that even their mouth organs are under the victim's skin at this point. Before they start sucking blood, the mites may be no more than 0.1 inches in size, but afterwards they increase tenfold. At the same time, the bag-like elastic body gradually stretches and acquires a light gray color. Although these mites do not mind eating our blood, their main victims are other mammals. Larger animals and humans are parasitized by adults, while smaller animals such as rodents are parasitized by larvae and nymphs. Ticks hide in the grass and wait until the target's within reach. Then they jump on it with their spread legs and cling to it. These insects are full and in no hurry to get anywhere. One such blood meal can last for days. Fluffy Caterpillar As realized by many, caterpillars are harmless creatures and you should not expect anything dangerous or terrible from them. However, there are some incredibly poisonous individuals in nature that are vitally important to know about. One of them is this one. Its habitat is the United States and Mexico. It lives in the forests, resting on the leaves of trees. Outwardly, it looks normal, not much different from other ordinary individuals. Its entire body is covered with long, thick hairs, which do not pose any danger. However, under them, you can find venomous spikes. It's enough to touch them to get burning, rash, and severe pain. In length, such a caterpillar usually doesn't exceed 1.2 inches. So watching it from the outside, an untrained person will take it for a harmless lump of fur. But as soon as you touch it, you'll feel an insane pain in the entire chest within seconds. There will be bruising at the point of contact with the caterpillar. It's also likely to be complemented by a headache and nausea. Usually, these symptoms go away the following day. However, if the fluffy caterpillar injects more venom than usual, it can take as long as a week. Africanized bee. Many of you will probably think that this is nonsense. Well, bees can't be among the most dangerous insects. Yes, bees from our vegetable garden are unlikely, but as for Africanized bees, it's quite possible. These aggressive insects have infested almost all of South America, and people don't know what to do about them. Anyway, before we start describing them, let's find out why bees living in America are called Africanized bees. It's actually quite simple. A famous entomologist chose Africanized African bees for his experiment. He crossed them with a local subspecies and got more than 25 hybrid families. The experiment was successful. The insects tolerated the South American heat perfectly and gave a lot of honey. It seemed to be a definite success, but as it soon turned out, it was too early to rejoice. Despite their high efficiency, the bees were insanely aggressive and attacked everything they encountered. In all the hives where they lived, the researchers even installed special fuses to prevent the bees from flying away. But as always, things didn't go according to plan. One of the beekeepers, either out of ignorance or by mistake, removed the barriers. On the same day, all 26 families left the cramped hives and flew away to an unknown destination. And then everything went naturally. They multiplied and began to take over more and more territories. People, as you can imagine, have no idea how to fight it. Everyone who gets the idea to go and chase them away is strongly advised to stay away from these monsters. Whoever happens to be around them, be it an intelligent person or a dangerous beast, they'll all be doomed to failure. Africanized bees sting their enemies until the victim is more than a third of a mile away or no longer show signs of life. These bees have already killed more than a thousand people, and how many animals is too awful to think about, and their main secret is not in a special physical form but in the usual persistence. Killer bees extract pollen much more actively than other subspecies. Because of this, they develop and grow stronger much faster. Scientists still have no idea what motivates them. 
Oriental Rat Flea Fleas are known to everyone as one of the main vectors of nasty things, and the southern rat flea is no exception. This insect has been dubbed the Black Death, and I think you can guess why. It's because it's a plague carrier. Once this monster killed more than 15 million people, about a quarter of the population of Europe at the time. Just imagine how dangerous this flea could be. Although the culprit was not the flea itself, but the bacillus carried by the southern rat. Elusive and small bloodsuckers as many scientists say, are the main possible carriers of this terrible disease. It's all about their specific digestive system structure. Their esophagus has a certain thickening, where without any harm to the flea itself, deadly bacteria accumulate. That's what infects a person when they suck blood. Interesting fact, these bacteria are exactly what makes the oriental rat flea hunt. Due to their accumulation in the body, at some point they form into a whole lump that blocks the food supply. Because of this, the flea has a permanent feeling of hunger and develops an addiction to constantly flying and sucking someone's blood. Trying to dine once again, the flea has its blood stuck in front of this lump and regurgitated back into the wound, together with deadly plague bacteria. That's how the infection occurs. It's lucky that the infected fleas themselves do not live that long, usually not more than 10 days. Otherwise, it'd be scary to imagine what the consequences could be if they were more survivable in conditions of eternal hunger. Fleas are not the only small creatures that can make a human life more problematic. Along with them is the red fire ant. It's considered one of the most dangerous, invasive ant species in the world because it has a strong venom. It's injected into the skin with a sting from a gland in the back of the abdomen. And it's not just a prick that causes a burning sensation, it's a full-blown sting that can drive a person to a lethal state. And once upon a time, they didn't exist and people didn't have a headache about it. But at some point, several Brazilian merchant ships died at an Alabama seaport with unplanned live cargo on board. As you can imagine, it didn't take long for them to relocate. The ants escaped from aboard and eventually multiplied, literally, all over the southern United States. It was a sin not to take advantage of such luck. The climate here was just right for their comfortable existence, and most importantly, here they had no natural enemies. Time passed and the ants did not stop developing. Soon they moved to Taiwan, Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, and even China, and it would have been okay if they had just settled far away from the cities and lived their lives. No, they had to damage livestock, displace other ants, living here all the time before them, and attack wild animals and even birds. In short, the fauna of almost the entire world has experienced why these ants are called fire ants. Gripping the skin with their powerful jaws, they tuck the abdomen and make more than one blow at once, causing a burn to occur in their place, hence the name. This is followed by nausea, allergies, and shortness of breath. Manticores This is the name of other insects that we're going to talk about. They're very large beetles, sometimes up to three inches long. They cannot fly but have incredibly powerful jaws, so much so that they can bite even an adult scorpion in half. These nocturnal hunters are not only adept at attacking but also at defending themselves with the aid of their tough, chitinous armor. Although I don't even know why Mother Nature gave them both. In my opinion, these stingers alone would have sufficed. After all, the power of their bite is such that this beetle will literally cut any opponent in half, no matter who it is. Together with this, manticores are also incredibly agile and fast creatures. It's believed that even though they're relatively large, these bugs can change direction faster than the human eye can react. In most cases, though, there's no need to react, as they ambush you, and no matter how agile their opponent is, no one will be able to avoid the attack. From the outside, only the head of this bug and part of its chitinous shell, which resembles a shield, will be visible. And if you add some surroundings like leaves, dirt, or rocks, you'll not be able to detect the manticore at all. Bombardier Beetle While some insects have extremely strong jaws or unimaginable agility, others have gone even further and acquired weapons that, as it seems at first glance, are simply unrealistic to resist. It's like using a gun during a fistfight. The Bombardier Beetle also has a marvelous defense mechanism that allows it to shoot its enemy with a mixture of chemicals heating up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Even more frightening is that the accuracy of this shot the beetle fires is incredible. 
No professional shooter can boast such accuracy. The bugs themselves live all over the world, except for Antarctica. Their size is small, usually not more than 1.2 inches. However, their main trick, as I said, is their defense mechanism. To carry out an attack, the beetle has two glands in its abdomen, four reservoirs, and a special chamber where the reaction takes place. The glands produce a mixture of chemicals. The reservoirs contain an element that acts as an igniter, and the special chamber is needed so that the bombardier himself is not harmed during the preparation of this nuclear mixture. Surprisingly, to put all this miracle process into action, the beetle needs only a fraction of a second. In such a short time, the chemical tanks are compressed, the valves open, and the substances enter the reaction chamber, ejecting a stream of searing mixture outside. However, far not all insects are dangerous due to the fact that they themselves can do something amazing. Tsetse flies, for example, do not shoot boiling water, do not have the strongest jaws, and do not even possess protective spines endowed with a toxin. Yet they're more dangerous than a lion, elephant, and crocodile combined. But how can this be? The answer is simple. But to find out, you have to get to know the fly itself. So it's inconspicuous. It has transparent wings and reddish eyes. It seems like everything is usual, but you should look a little closer to notice a sharp proboscis. It's with its help Tsetse fly feeds, biting everyone who gets in its way. Small rodents, dangerous predators, it literally doesn't care who that'll be. Interesting fact, those are zebras these insects cannot get at. The stylish black and white pattern blocks the bloodsucker's orientation system. They don't realize where to land and avoid contact with zebras. Well, a Tsetse fly will never turn down a tasty lunch. I'll tell you more, it's like a hungry tourist who first appeared at a buffet. It'll eat until it feels bad. And along with the delicious blood, the fly will get a lot of trypanosomes, parasites that use the fly like a shuttle bus. It takes them from one infected individual and carries them to the body of another. It's these invisible creatures that mow down all living creatures, betraying the tsetse fly, which really just likes to eat. The giant Asian hornet, which is considered to be the largest hornet in the world, will not be able to escape responsibility. The length of its individual subspecies can reach 2 inches, with a wingspan of more than 3 inches, and a sting of almost 0.2 inches. The main feature distinguishing this monster from other hornets is its very large head. The distance from the back of the eyes to the back of the head is said to be several times more than the width of the eye. Who's going to scrutinize this hornet's head, though, right? The important the important thing for us is to know what to expect from them, and there's a lot we can do. Giant Asian hornets love to attack other people's hives, such as local beehives. They're both a great source of honey and meat. Having plundered the nest of laborers, hornets provide food not only for themselves but also for their bloodthirsty larvae. It's said that only 30 of these giants can cope with a colony of thousands of ordinary bees. And even if a farmer notices this outrage, there's nothing he can do about it. The venom of Asian hornets is one of the most toxic among insects. The bite of two to three individuals will easily cause anaphylactic shock with all the consequences. According to statistics, the stings of these monsters send dozens of adults to glory every year. That's about it. Write in the comments which insects seem to you the most dangerous. Leave a like and subscribe to our channel.